All right, so week one in CIT 93 is being recorded before the start of the actual semester so that if you do get here early and you finish that all important week zero and you want to actually do a little more, by the way, you don't have to, you totally can though. I do actually recommend whenever possible work ahead in a class like this. So in this week, week one of the semester, I actually want to do a little bit of a clarification or actually extend the knowledge I already introduced about the way the course is laid out. I've been using Canvas for quite some time and I love it, but I've also found things that I hope uh, help keep students on track. And I want you to, you've seen it in week zero, but you'll see it again this week. And then what I'm going to do uh, after that, I'm just going to have a, a matter of fact, maybe I'll start with this because I think this is a good thing to start with. So this week you're going to get the experience of having your first code along. And this is where we take the content from the Udemy course, you code along, and at specific points in that watching and coding along, and I'll give you specific instructions about what I want you to do, you will have a challenge. And the challenge is way important. I mean, the whole thing is important, of course. That's what, you know, you're not surprised to hear me say that. But the challenges are specifically important in the following sense. If you give those challenges some time, and I know time is a precious commodity and we all have to figure out how to do time management. But in, these, in this case, I want you to know the importance is that having that experience of figuring something out and, you know, I don't want you to spend a ton of time on it, but I do want you to give it its just reward. And that's kind of a funny way to say it, but I, it's time to give your brain enough time to learn to problem solve, okay? Because this is really a check for you to see how well you got the concepts that were covered before this in the course, meaning in the Udemy course. Now, how I use this, of course, besides doing the code along, which you will get this week, is also I use it to also take the concepts that we're learning for the learn togethers, which you will have the first one next week. And you'll actually, it'll be like an extended challenge to where I say, okay, here, I want you to do accomplish this with code. And you'll see this next week. Now, those are the two things that happen most every week. But then in week six and week nine or week 12 and then week 18, 17, we do develop or dev projects, I call them. And this is where you're going to come up with a concept. You're going to code it and you're going to come in and see me. Now, when I say that, you know, if you do it virtually, that's totally fine. If you want to come on campus and see me, totally fine. Um, and you can just know that in my office hours, that even though I may be at city or I may be at my house, you can either, you know, if I'm on campus, you can come see me. But if I happen to hold office hours later, which I will do during those weeks, um, you can totally just do these online. It's really what your preference is. But you'll come into a session with me, either in person or in Zoom. And then you will talk about, describe to me, hopefully running code, code that is working, uh, has no errors. And then we will have a conversation and I will assess how well you were able to accomplish the goals of the course these three times of the semester. And I know hearing something like that can seem like, you know, a bit overwhelming because maybe you've never had anybody, if this is your first coding class, you can't imagine what this looks like, you know, don't, don't try to go there yet. Just know that that's the way the course is laid out. Okay. So just know that. And then, so the importance going back to the challenges that you will see this week already is that it gets you into that mindset. It gets that brain working on troubleshooting. Uh, it really clarifies for you, hopefully, what you're learning because you can accomplish the, the challenges. But if you're not being able to do that, watching watching the code, because he will show you, right? He will show you, here's, here's how you code that if you get stuck. That is also a type of learning and absolutely important. Okay, so don't discount that as well. But if you find yourself doing that most of the time, come talk to me. Uh, in general, I tell students, come in. I, I really enjoy talking about talking with students and figuring out how I can make this course better. And that is one of the ways you help me 
is by saying, you know what, I didn't get this piece. And so that I can emphasize that more when I'm having a uh, lecture kind of discussions. Okay. So I just want you to know the three aspects of this course, the code alongs, which you do this week, next week, you do a first learn together. And then three times a semester, you do dev projects. Okay. More on the dev projects as we go through. Okay, so I just wanted you to have that in your head as you move into the course. This is, of course, week one, so there's a lot already having come at you at week zero, but I just want to go over a few things about the course and just briefly look at some other concepts. Okay, so I'm going to move back over here. Uh, right now, I'm logged into Canvas as a student, um, and at this point, you can see, and this is just a summer or a review a little bit of what I covered in the start here. But in this case, for this particular student, which is no one actually in this class, you can see I, that student completed the start here, but week one will not show up, okay, for them until they complete the how did it go. Now, at this point, I'm a, you would have had to have gotten through this to watch the video that you're watching here, unless you subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is totally okay as well. But in this case, I want you to know going forward, this is how the class works. You have an attendance for, for this week one, you have an attendance item and you have a code along. Now for week two, you'll have an attendance, a code along and a learn together. So you'll have one additional item. And the idea is you move through them sequentially. Okay, you do attendance, you hit reply, and you can, so you can see here what you have to do. So in this case, you have to contribute, which means a discussion, you hit a reply, you give, and I'll be specific at the end of this video, what I want you to reply with. And then you can move on to the Thursday night item, and in that case, you'll submit it. So when you reply here, everyone in the class will see it. When you submit here, only you and I will see it. But let's go back here and simulate this concept, right? So let's say, and I'm just going to do, uh, actually, I'm just going to put anything in here for now, because hopefully you did the post uh, the way it needed to go. So if I go to next now, what should now open up is that week one. And just to show you it in another way, is that if I come back here, you can now see that as soon as I get the completed, I now get that next item. So this is how I set up the course is to enforce or, and I don't want to say force, but I require sequential, uh, meaning you need to move item by item through the course and complete one item and then do the next item and move on. All right, so let's come back in here. Now we're in the week one items. I've talked about what we're doing this week. I've talked about the code along challenges. And just to say a word about getting help, um, of course, you can email me. I really prefer that you email me through Canvas. If you're on Discord, which, by the way, great. Thank you for joining Discord. That is a way to get help. Uh, know that I uh, may not have, will probably not have the kind of schedule you have. I'm typically, I like to get up early in the morning, I like to work out, I like to get my work done. I, I'm not an evening person typically, and when I am, I have family time. So, you know, just know that when you're working may not be when I'm working. So that if you're in need of my help, you need to plan a little ahead to get that. Because I do allow students to submit late work, but it is discounted 25% if you do it after the due date, okay? So try not to get in that situation. Okay, now Discord I've talked about, and I've talked about the way the course is laid out. So just as an example, one thing as I was playing around, and I just want to say this, and actually I show you this in the way of looking at my Git pod. At this point in the semester, I have not, you're, no one, no students are here, so I don't know how many of you have chosen the cloud development environment setup and how many of you are doing local. But my guess, and this we'll see how well I guess here, is that many of you will choose the cloud. So here I am at gitpod.io. This is what we did in week zero. And I have my two workspaces. I have my public and I have my private. So the work that you're about to come in will be done in your private repos. So I'm going to go ahead and open that one. Okay. I just want to show you a few things because I noticed this as I was actually looking at the work that you're going to do this week. 
Now, sometimes, depending on when VS Code is updated, you may get this getting started. That generally happens when, because VS Code, no matter where you're running it locally or on the cloud, often gets updated. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. So I have the boot camp. I have the basics directory. And I've already, this is the one we already did, the app.js. I actually created a strings.js because it's part of what the code along and I was playing along to figure that out. But I want to show you something just because I think it's good to know. When Andrew does this uh, hello world, and again, he didn't put all this content. We did not all this content, but content. He called it app. He called it hello dash world. I called it app.js. I put it in the subdirectory called basics. And now in the week one code along, you're going to create several more files in here. So what I thought, you know what, it'd be worth showing you that I actually could make this file hello world, hello dash world dot js. But what would happen if I did that right now, given that my index file, right, is pointing to my app.js. Now to kind of extend this, let's just go ahead and this is an important piece. I don't know if I covered clearly enough in the first Z week zero, but in order for the go live to work, you need to have, I believe, let me verify this. Yeah. So actually you can have the go live here. And I guess what it would do is let's actually see because my thought process, because of the way I'd seen this run in the past was that you needed to have the index file open. Yeah, so maybe not. So maybe it just looks. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and, and run it, right? Well, actually, see, there's multiple ways because if I go live, let's just see what it does. Where does it go? It does do that index file. So it must look for the only index file that's in there. Hopefully you've gotten used to this. Inspect. Come over here. Remember what you're looking for when you get, in, and again, Chrome is recommended. I'm going to hit the console. If you don't see it listed up here, I hit right click inspect. You can also do a, a keyboard shortcut for that. I'm going to go to console. I'm going to see all this content. I'm going to hit refresh real quick. And I know it's sometimes a little hard to see, but if you look for that message that you know you typed for the console to output, then you can see it here. And the rest of this is just from the gitpod.io. Okay, so why am I showing you this? Let's go back. So what would happen right now if I was to do this? If I come into basics, right, because it's pointing to a JS file that's not in its current directory. But if I, in that, I hit right click and here, let's see where it's at. I think it said I have my fonts too big. I can't see it. There's a couple ways to do this. Rename was, oh, enter. So actually, can I just hit enter? Oh, I can. So that's a nice. Another way I can do that is just hit enter. And I can say, hello, dash world. What's your guess on what would happen here if I did that? Let's go back to document. And now we're in here. And by the way, notice one thing that happened was that, and it's a little hard to see in this way, but it automatically reloaded. So it's what we call hot reloading. Uh, and it's great because whenever you make changes, you want to see it show up. So what now that we see is we see an error and because it's still looking for that app.js, which we can totally fix. But what I want you to know is that that's why this console is so helpful because you'll see those kind of errors, right? So if I come over here, how would I fix it? I'd go to the index file. I could backspace into here. If I hit forward slash, in this case, the editor is saying, hey, there's only two files in that directory. Let's go ahead and have the have you select which one you want. And again, because my file is on autosave, right? I don't have to do anything. I come over to my output and then I can see that that error because hot reload already happened. Otherwise, I'd have to come over here and hit refresh has automatically rendered, rerun my HTML and my CSS so that I see the output. Okay. Now, here's the other thing that happened is that I now have items that are green. And I didn't talk about that when I was making changes. But what that should say in your head or in your mind 
is that I've made changes to my code. So now my workspace on, and by the way, this is also true for local development, that my workspace or my local uh, dev space is now had changes, right? That are in this case, untracked. So I've been showing you how to come down and the terminal automatically uh, in the case of git pod IO. Um, otherwise you can come up here, right? And you could terminal, you can do a new terminal window. Uh, typically I noticed as I was playing around with this the other day, I can add a bash, which is git bash, which is part of GitHub, but using the git pod task for git pod IO is fine. Uh, using Bash or using PowerShell for Windows is fine as well. So the other, um, when I, once I'm here, right, I get status. I can see I have a couple of files here, right, that have that need to be uh, added. So I do git add star. I do git commit dash m. I'd say updating files. So that's my commit message. And you're going to see this starting in your first colon. I asked for specific messages and I'm just giving you the example here. You don't miss. And by the way, I would actually code along in this case, but I'm not going to actually, let's see, that might be my question for this one. Okay. So now that I've done this right now, what's my get status? My get status is that I am one commit, right? My branch is ahead. And what does that mean? I'm going to show you again. I'm going to go over to another tab I already have open. I'm going to refresh the screen. I'm going to go to um, my Git, my JS bootcamp. I'm going to go into basics and I can see that this is the old file that I had before I have updated because I haven't completed the last Git workflow. Okay. And that's just what I wanted to show you again. So Git in this case, push. Now that pushes the changes out. Oh, let me go back here, here. And if I refresh here, okay, now I see that that file is updated. And the other update that it did was to the index, which we didn't look at, but I want you to get used to this concept is whenever you're coding either locally or out on gitpod.io, right? You want to, whether you finish coding your homework and your, your code alongs or whatever you've done, I would just make a habit of completing that Git workflow because it's so important for your overall experience because you don't want to be making changes to your GitHub. But this is where we're going to submit code and I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Okay. So did that make sense? Maybe that's part of what your reply. Oh, I didn't talk about that. So let's actually go out and talk about that. So the other thing, let me bring up my hello world. One of the things last semester, as I was working on, and you'll see this in uh, the code along that you're going to do, uh, you'll do nine through 14, is that he talks about semicolons um, in that when you're coding, right? You can have semicolons are optional at the end of line. And some people who have done coding before feel like that's a better way to code because it's more clear uh, what the end of line is, but they are optional in JavaScript. But one of the things I was playing around with today was actually an, an extension. And listen before you run out and go get this, because I want to tell you a little hiccup I ran into today was I went and in extensions, I searched for one that I've recommended. And if you're taking my CIT 82, I recommend it for that class as well. It's called Prettier. And in this case, I've already uh, installed it in my workspace. And one of the benefits of Prettier is it will automatically put those semicolons on for you or include them if you feel like you want to do it. But again, it's optional. But one of the things I ran into was that in Gitpod, this wasn't working the way I wanted it to. And I still haven't solved it quite honestly, because what it's supposed to do, and let's see, it'll probably make a, let's see if it is working, it is working now. And if I supposedly when you hit, oh, actually, let me do this. Let me go back up to the file. It is working now, I'll go back here. 
And if I hit enter, that's supposed to automatically put that semicolon in there. And I did, you know, 30, 40 minutes of research to figure out why it wasn't because on the local dev it was. And this is kind of some of the stuff you run into with coding. One of the things I had to figure out, and I haven't yet totally, but I had to make to get it to work. I had to come over here, right click, say format selection with, tell it to do it with prettier and then automatically put those colons. So one thing you can do is just at the end of your coding is to do it with all the code that you've written. You know, but again, I don't require them. But if it's something you want to do, totally. And you and you will find uh, people who have done coding for many more years uh, than I have uh, on both sides of this, include them or not to include them. There, You find this in people that do coding is they're very opinionated <laughs> about the way they think things should be. Okay? Okay. So I've talked about these three things. Here's my question for you, right? Uh, and I was asking it before. What was I asking before? Because as we were doing this coding, right? Yeah, so that uh, actually the one question would be, no, I'll, I will already by now know what, what most of you have selected, you know, and, and maybe you can tell me, because there's other reasons to do pretty, or maybe you would want to do that. And I could definitely send you information on all the benefits. It's a very common extension uh, that we see. There are many out there. Uh, I do notice, and this is a key, is that extensions on Gitpod.io are not going to be as available as they are on the local dev environment. But for our class, pretty much once we start through the beginning, you should be, uh, you shouldn't really need uh, extensions unless you just want to play with them in that case. Okay, let me come back here. Dang it, I still don't remember what I was going to ask you. Maybe you remember. Hey. Maybe that'll be fun. <laughs> I don't know. There was a question I was thinking about, about asking you through this video, what would be a good question? So maybe either do you remember what that question is or what would be a good question? Do you understand, right? The way, and maybe that's the key too, because I had talked a bit about the connection between the code along challenges and the dev work. You know, is there any question about that? Right? Do you have any questions about my office hours? Again, you can go look in the syllabus to see when they are. If you do need, and I didn't talk about this, but if you did need to meet with me uh, after, um, you know, early in the evening, I don't do late, but if you wanted to do early in the evening, I'd say give me a, a bit of notice, and if I can work it out, I will. Um, you know, so hey, any questions? What was the question I asked? Or what would a good question for me to put here be? All right. Hope that helps you understand how to start into week one. Let's get started if you want. Again, this is early. All right. See you later.